thank you for uh, coming so early in the morning for a service that was can be a bit difficult. Welcome to that demo. Uh, two years ago, we introduced Open Slack at the main track talk at Boston. And last year, I came to hear about like, an update of what happened since that introduction years ago. And, and this year around, we figured out that that would be a good thing to do as well. So this is not really an introduction to Open Slack for those who know it is at all. It's more mostly about what changed for the project over the last year and where we are going for the, for the next release. Uh, my name is Thierry Carrez. I'm the lead governance manager for the OpenStack project for uh, almost since I'm the beginning of the project. I'm currently the chair of the OpenStack technology committee, which will be used in a few, uh, in a few moments. I'm also a Python software information member. You can write me on IRC or Twitter or anything. Uh, a few words about OpenStack for those who don't know what it is at all. Uh, OpenStack is uh, open source software that you can use to run your own um, cloud infrastructure as a service provider. Uh, if you build a company that competes with Amazon Web Services, that's probably a software you could use. Uh, it provides a full infrastructure as a service stack, so it's a uh, uh, it provides you with access to more resources through an API. We do uh, compute resources like, uh, like most, uh, most cloud infrastructure service uh, projects.
by, by all those stats which are functional and not necessarily complete. Uh, we grew from three core projects to seven core projects. And, and we had uh, more than 18,000 commits over, over the last year. We we'll also look at the number of contributors uh, to, the, to the project. This graph is showing the number of contributors per month. So um, for the last 30 days, how many different people want to, to go to the project. It's not like an old time thing. If you look at old time data, it's, uh, it's more than 630 different people that contributed code over the last year. But it's more interesting to see the, like the returning through the, the people that are actually not committing just one time, but also uh, come back and we have about like 200 people coming to contribute to our stack every, every, every month. Uh, adoption grew quite a bit as well. We had more than 1,400 people showing up at our last OpenStack session in San Diego, in California. Uh, we also uh, an uptick in adoption for, for public cloud deployments with uh, Rackspace transitioning its uh, cloud servers offering to run on OpenStack fully and, um, and actually run uh, the code that is in, in, in our trunk branch, uh, our master branch, where it's only lagging for like a few weeks now. So it's uh, it's pretty pretty good that they, they can run like the top of the top of the code, tip of the code. Uh, HP also has uh, offering <coughs> HP Cloud Dreamhost also uh, announced their uh, open their their own um, their own cloud offering. And we have uh, in France we have a cloud one that announced that they were building something based on the stack and hopefully they will deliver it over the next year. We also saw an uptick in private cloud deployments as well. It's really difficult to get data from the people that are actually deploying um, OpenStack in a private setting because they, they don't have to tell us. But we're gradually seeing more and more uh, deployments. I learned about like eight new ones just, just at Fausta. Um, so people just come to me and say, well, you know, we deployed that. So we have a Cisco WebEx that is running on top of, of an OpenStack like open infrastructure, Mercado Libre, which is an email of SaaS America. Uh, OVH in France, French ISP, has a um, cloud storage, user-oriented cloud storage product that is built on top of, of that components as well. And uh, Sina, which is the company behind the Chinese Twitter, which is like bigger than Twitter. And, and they, they also run um, part of their infrastructure on top of OpenStack. The other uh, big change we had in, in the last year is in uh, governance. So the, the project was originally, originally created by Rackspace and NASA, and uh, <coughs> the trademark and the governance of the project were owned by Rackspace up, up until next year. And, and that created a lot of um, fear that you know, they might do the wrong thing at, at some point. And, and, and that fear was expressed here at first and during our, um, our common uh, discussion we had last year on, on the future of the project, what we should do. And it's, it's pretty great that we managed to put it off to transition to a non-profit foundation, all the governance and trademark aspects within like eight months of that, that discussion. So we, we now have a, 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 the OpenStack Foundation, which owns the, the trademark and, and uh, the governance or, around the project. We have um, three different bodies. The board of directors, which is like a foundation board, which is tasked with uh, protection of the trademark and empowering development and that type of stuff. We have the user committee, which is a representation of our users so that they can feed back uh, what, what are their most pressing needs to the technical and, and, uh, and the suits in the board of directors. And finally, we have the technical committee, which is in charge of the direction uh, the technical direction of the project. So the technical committee is all the core projects, PTLs, so project technical leads, plus five directly elected people. And we're uh, tasked with decision on, on cross-project issues. We have that, uh, the PTLs decide for each of their project, but sometimes there is an issue that is affecting more than just them. And, and then we, we, we have this body, elected body to, uh, to basically design on that. It also forms an ultimate technical appeals board, just in case we could not resolve anything at the lower level. It never uh, was never used, so it's probably a good thing. Uh, the technical committee also orients the use of common resources like um, QA documentation um, and, and like release management. We, we have a finite set of resources and, and 
we need to decide how to best spend them. And finally, the technical committee also accepts new project incubation. It is a project that might become one day part of our of the stack of technical release. We actually um, approved two new project, two new incubated projects in, in, in the last month's uh, simulator, which provides uh, metering and metrics for your uh, running cloud, and uh, heat, which uh, provides orchestration of resources at, at uh, top level. Uh, if you're interested in those projects, there will be presentations this afternoon in this room about both heat and CFR, so I won't get into much detail. We had two releases over the last year. Um, the first in, in April, called the DSX release, or uh, more boringly, 2012.1. Uh, um, this release saw the addition of two new core projects, uh, Keystone, which provides common authentication across the range of services that we have with Vanity Data and Horizon, which is a web dashboard, so that you can use a web UI to interact with your resources if that's what you're into. Um, the main focus for that release was clearly to integrate with Keystone, because we basically added that each project used to have their, their own uh, way of handling users, and, and so it was quite key that, that we would integrate with that. And the other focus was stability, because that was the first release that was integrated in a Linux distro for long-term support. Uh, approach, so it was included in Ubuntu 12 for LTS, which was a good sign that, that we reached some, some stability that so this tool could support it for five years. But also already in September, saw so the addition of two new projects, uh, Cinder, which is a ripoff of the Nova volume functionality, the volume, the block storage handling functionality inside Nova was separated out and, and made its own project with its own API, so that you can directly um, uh, address block storage resources with, uh, without having to go through Nova and mount them on, uh, in a VM, etc. We also have a Quantum. Quantum is, is providing high-level uh, networking features that like you, you, you can basically request network segments and plug your various um, stuff to it. So it's, uh, it's more an evolution of the, the... We still have the networking features, the base networking features inside Nova, Maybe if you want to get serious and, and use hardware or software smart switches, um, you want to go through quantum to do that. There are too many features to, to actually be able to make a good selection. I selected three completely randomly. Um, version object in Swift, return of Hyper-V support in Nova, and, and uh, support for public key infrastructure tokens in Keystone. That's more interesting. So what's coming up? We have um, we are in the middle of our Grizzly release, or past the middle of our Grizzly development cycle, which is supposed to end April 4. Um, and I, there were a lot, lot of like more than 200 features features are lined up. We don't really know what exactly will make it yet. There are a number of features that will I'll discuss that are already merged, and some of them are compromised by them. We'll see. So I, I try to make a selection of features that are interesting uh, and that we are reasonably sure will make it. On the Nova side, I'd say that the most significant thing, to my opinion, is, is the support of cells, which is a deployment model you can use to, um, to deploy uh, OpenStack as a massive scale, at a massive scale without having to resolve to, uh, to tricky uh, HA um, systems for, for everything like the queue of the database, so you basically have separate Nova deployments that, that are completely self-sufficient and that talk to each other. And that's actually what Rockspace uses for their, their deployment, it's really big. So uh, it's great that we managed to merge it into mainline code. Uh, the provisioning is the ability to, um, to request bare metal resources in the same way you request virtual machines. So, that can be used as a provisioning tool. You, you basically say you want a new uh, server, but it happens to be a physical server rather than just a VM. Instance actions history. Um, it's, it's the ability to log everything that happened to an instance and come back to see what exactly happened to your instance. So it's more like a uh, history tool of, of all the actions you push to one of your server instances. A lot of hypervisor support improvements. 
in the VMware, in uh, the hypervisor, in the Zen hypervisor, and in the Hyper-V hypervisor, they were slightly uh, lagging behind the KVM one, and they picked up a lot of uh, small improvements to, to catch up. We also had a config options cleanup. There were more than 527, I think, configuration options in, in Nova, and we are supposed to have produced them to a more reasonable set. I don't know, Mark, if you know how much we have now. Config options. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> that, was, that was useful. <laughs> and there were a lot of changes also behind the surface with um, uh, NoDB compute, which is an effort to um, separate compute nodes from access to the to the database. So, uh, compute nodes are where VM, your VMs are run, and that means where user code is run. So, potentially, the less trusted of the system. And we want to make sure that that compute node, if there is like a, a flow in virtualization technology somewhere, uh, and you can break out of the of the virtualization container and Get into the get into the machine. You don't really want that to infect the rest of your cloud. So we are working on removing direct database access uh, from the compute nodes, and that will uh, we will we'll have to introduce a, a new type of node called the Nova Conductor, which will actually address uh, access the database on behalf of a set of compute nodes. And finally, a lot of database improvements um, to make to count, like introduction of, of new unique keys, indexes, and and the ability to archive deleted data so that you keep your, your database tight and efficient. For Glance, Glance is the, the component that does um, handle disk images for, for Nova, so it's like a, like a disk image store. Um, they should implement multiple image locations. There is the ability to uh, upload the same image to multiple different places, and then you can pick your favorite delivery method. method. Um, image sharing is the ability to share the same image across multiple tenants. Property protection is the ability to change only part of the metadata and, and not allow the, that person to, uh, to change everything in, in the image. So it's uh, more fine-grained protection for uh, disk image metadata. For uh, Cinder, which is the block storage component. Um, they implemented direct volume cloning, so you used to have to mount your block storage in a VM to actually request cloning, and they implemented it jointly at the API level. So now it's just one, one REST call to uh, one, uh, one REST request to actually do that, that cloning. We also added volume scheduler, a volume scheduler. So you can place your block storage volumes with the same type of granularity that, that you can place your VMs. So you can request them far apart or really, really close or with some other scaling algorithm. And lots and lots and lots of, of storage drivers because apparently sto the storage vendors want to be supported. So uh, they all have different technologies and they all want to be there. So VMC, HP with the free bar stuff, multiple fiber channel and, and more are coming because they realize that the feature for this is in two weeks and now they push their code, which is not so good. Quantum. Uh, Quantum is the networking component. The main challenge for them is to close the gap with Nova networking so that they, they are super set of the features that are still in Nova rather than just an alternative. And so they push support for security groups and multi-host uh, multi DHCP NAT mode, which were present in Nova, but not in Quantum yet for uh, the full song release. They also introduced advanced services that they, they have a load balancing feature within, within, uh, within Quantum. So it, they start adding higher level um, networking features. And load balancing is the first one. And finally, lots of, of, of plugin updates. Plugins are the part of the code that actually deliver uh, does things so it talks to your hardware, uh, to, it talks to your hardware switches or to your software switch uh, software, and and so they made a lot of updates and they added a new new ones like Brocade and, and F five type hardware. Uh, Keystone, they introduced a new version of their API which had adds the notion of domains. Uh, they added an Active Directory LDAP backend to store the credentials. Um, they um, 
they support pre-authenticated yes. They support pre-authenticated tokens. They are related to uh, generic tokens that will be valid for uh, for an action in the future. And user groups, which are like user groups. Uh, Horizon, uh, they their focus is on keeping up with all the features that the other projects add. So various things, especially in the one area. That's very interesting. Um, Swift. Swift is different, uh, so they're, they they do releases, interim releases in the middle of our common releases. So it's more difficult to have a six months view on where they're going. But they added recent in the recent uh, uh, releases, they added custom log anchors, um, support for when challenge gets, and the ability to do a bulk import and uh, delay the um, One thing we did for the, over the last year is to rename the. Often like common effort to uh, Oslo, which is the new name for it. Uh, it's like common code that runs into multiple services that we provide, and we want to turn them into a proper library. But to do that, we need to have an API that is relatively st stable, and all projects agree to uh, use the same API. So uh, in, a, in a first step, we do a manage code copy mechanism to avoid duplication of maintenance. And when it's ready and, and, and more uh, um, stable, we turn it into a proper library. The goals for uh, Oslo in Grizzly are to release an Oslo config library, I think it's done now. Uh, we may have uh, um, a separate RPC library as well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So we have common RPC code to talk with the queues, we have common service infrastructure code to build basic services, we have now a common root wrap, root wrap being the, the piece of code that lets us uh, uh, run some commands as root without giving root to the root system. And finally, maybe common database code might be, might be pushed so that we don't complicate that either. Uh, more open stack to that first then. Um, just after this talk, Mark will, will go into more technical details in the architecture of, of open stack projects in general. Uh, I'll be giving a, a, a talk on the Python John Market on another stack in the Python dev room later. And uh, this afternoon, security concerns for, uh, for cloud developers in general and another stack in particular, and heat and CNN. That's it. Thank you. We have uh, minus one minute. So in the packaging front, I'm not exactly sure if we had a significant change over the last year. We're, uh, we're in Ubuntu, we're in Canada, uh, we're in Sumo, uh, uh, we're in Gen 2, I think. In Debian. Uh, well, they're here. They can shout. I think one of them. And it's, it's relatively well supported. Partly due to the fact that Python is not that complex to, uh, to uh, package, but uh, then the challenge is to have like uh, seamless upgrades and registration of other common packages. And so the, the challenge is more in the in the above level, the, like the tools that will let you upgrade a running system, which is made of multiple machines with multiple versions. And we've been working on making sure that we can. Um, Partially upgrade, uh, like an over install can be partially upgraded. So we support both uh, RPC version uh, message versions so that you can still have part of your cloud running in the whole thing and, and, and another part already upgraded. So that's the type of uh, challenges you have. Is there a migration tool coming? Migration tool coming? Yeah, to get from uh, Folsom to Essex and, uh, oh, sorry, from Folsom to Grizzly and from 2H, etc. So that's that's mostly supported by distributions directly. So for example, Ubuntu has uh, their with their Juju stuff, they, they can they can do an upgrade of, of a, a running they 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 would an upgrade of SX to Folsom. So I suppose they will do it again for Folsom to Grizzly. <coughs> and and that's we have also have the same type of features in Puppet Recipes or Chef Recipes. 
So it's um, it's something we don't really address at the at, at, at open stack level. But, and in the same way, we don't do an installer. We don't really do an installer. We do a, a convenient way of installing everything on the same machine. Uh, we don't do it in an official installer, and that's where the distros can differentiate. Uh, I understand that from your uh, technical point of view, but for uh, user organizations, that's where the costs are. That's where, sorry. That's where the costs are. Sure. It's Make, making installers, uh, migrating. Yeah, and, and it's, it, I mean, that's where we don't, basically, as an open source project, we don't really uh, provide a final finish. Product. It's something, it's a bit like the Linux kernel. You don't really take the source code and, and, and you, well, we used to do that, but we don't do that so much anymore because the distros do the work for us and they do it well. So it's also about enabling this ecosystem of companies to, to be able to provide additional value and actually installation, operating, and operations type things are really a really good thing. We need to enable them to do that. Also. That's exactly what's creating the distribution working for the users of the product. I'll, I'll, I'll need to, uh, to pass to, to Mark now, but the idea is we, we make sure that we have the, reason, the, the technical features to enable them to do that. that like, like the versioning their RPC messages is necessary for them to be able to do partial upgrades of their clouds. Yeah. And, 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 but then we don't do the final tool that will do it like with bells and whistles. And, 